I don't think I feel like I walked out of the podcast as much as I did like a, a strike. I had my first date with my wife in two years. And I told her after I was like, look, I have to stay up. But it turns out like, you know, when I'm hearing you're like making it, ah, maybe I will wait, I won't. You're like come with us. If you guys didn't do the things like you had to like cancel a date, it makes it less credible. That sounds like fake trauma. You if if he would have stolen You want to say, have you ever done a violent act to somebody? Yeah, yes. yeah, it feels yeah. great. Who are you kidding, man? I, I, I felt great in the ass. moment. It felt great in the moment, but it, yeah, I, tr- I carry yeah. tremendous guilt for it. Why you would know? you let him take the yeah, yeah, cards the, with Yeah, him? why didn't you just take it to yourself? I, and that is what it comes down to is I'm stupid. <laughs> and you got the handwriting stupid, of a five year old. Stupid, <laughs> stupid. With my girlfriend's situation right now, I ain't that trusted. What? So she's got to earn back the trust. There's a very real opportunity that you and I will not work out if this type of thing happens again. You want to be very careful. Don't f*** it up. The Lol Cow Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Lol Cow Live, where the Lol Cow Podcast is eventually known. I'm here with Boogie2998 and Wings of Redemption. This is the day after the uh, the, the breakup live stream when Wings decided to be a complete f- and walk out in the podcast. Mm. Bro, he just said, I'm not coming on tonight. That ship has sailed maybe next week. Bro. At the end of the day, it ain't about letting you down. It ain't about letting me down. It's letting the 5,000 people in chat down right now. Uh, Wings, you I, want to comment on that? I don't think I feel like I walked out of the podcast as much as I did like a, a strike. You did a strike. Is that how you saw it? I, I look at it this <laughs> way. Labor, like, labor strike. I, well, you could have involved us. Well, it, it, okay, it doesn't work like, if I involve you have, guys. Because like one. We're in the same team, stupid. I understand you're on the same team. But if you guys knew what was going down. It wouldn't have worked. Like, like there's there's this whole like fake drama aspect about our show, and none of our drama is really fake. Like, it, yeah. it just happens it's, that it's people are taking sh- it gets clickbaited. It does get clickbaited, yeah. but people will take a shot at it. It's like, for example, like we had two people come out on Boogie just because they want the clout. You had that trap daddy guy, then you got this flaming star, which dog, flaming star. He's are you his saying name. that you were never going to quit, and the whole thing was a no, giant no, no, work? no, no, because no, that's what people, no, no, no. I was fully willing to quit but i didn't think i was going to have to quit because like my my requests weren't unreasonable it's not like i was out here trying to extort money or anything like that i never asked for anything but what i was owed but as there was a lot of things going on that needed to be addressed and i kept asking about it and it just kept getting ignored like um Animals running the zoo, the shorts not getting uploaded, uh, us not getting stuff on Spotify. Well, I'm glad you did that. Connor's yeah, an yeah, idiot. Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> like like there's things that the show that that we could run so much more smoother than we do right now, and it just mm. it, it just was it was getting ignored. And unless something happened that shook the boat, it was just going to continue to get ignored. It's like what really pushed me over the edge was I was asking Keemstar for like just just ban some words and. In YouTube chat, don't ban people. Just ban some words that that shouldn't be said anyway in YouTube chat, and ignored for a day and a half. And Keemstar, who expected apologies from me for ignoring him when you messed up that one time, Tom. Remember that when he Keemstar wanted to, to do like v- video apologies to him. I didn't apologize. You shouldn't apologize. I don't, I don't apologize you. either. Like I'm not going to do that. Sh- I didn't apologize to him. But, hey, but, listen, but at the same time, I'm the he guy here who get on his hands and knees for fun. Okay, so like let let me do all the apologizing. I I can, yeah, I, well, believe me, that's what yeah. I was hoping it would suffice. And, then, sure then he's like, he, then yeah, he wants yeah, to yeah. come at me with <laughs> this sob story. Like I don't have enough time in the day. I'm doing this, 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 and this, and this. I'm like, I'm sure you're a very busy man, but as a man with wealth, you have underlings. You couldn't have like overflow come in and put some put some. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> overflow <laughs> you know baby came out here can be put my fucking, uh by words in my chat i don't give a fuck who does it i've been heard from him in a minute overflow's overflow. a king he's a great guy we don't like overflow i love over- nice i love overflow. On YouTube. i love him he's a great guy like overflow i haven't talked to him in half a decade but i'm gonna put it aside. i know we always bring the fucking fight up but overflow hit me the hardest yeah. anybody hit me in the boogie fight oh really because <laughs> because like when like when he came to my house I hadn't been hit in the face in a while, like since high school, right? So like I'd forgotten what kind of a system shock. So I wanted to be hit by a man to kind of like prepare myself for what it's like. So I had overflow, put the glove on and just deck me. Yeah, I bet he hit you hard. Yeah. And he hit me way harder than Boogie hits. (laughs) Oh yeah. yeah. I barely hit you. Yeah. So I wanna I wanna stay on the topic a little bit because that you know, that was kind of a you know, I I, like I I had my first date 
with my wife in two years. Mm -hmm. And I told her after I was like, look, you know, this is this is our money. I have to stay up um, after I went to the concert and she she stuck with me. But it turns out like, you know, when I'm hearing you're like making it sort of like, ah, maybe I will wait. I won't. You're like with us and you didn't even think of us. That's the thing that gets me wings. If you guys if you guys didn't do the things like you had to like cancel a date, it makes it less credible. Because like, like realistically, see, like, you're saying like credibility. If, if King would that sounds like fake drama. You if see, King like, would have stonewall, you want to say you want to say it's fake drama when it's convenient, and then you want to say I was willing to quit when it's well. Fake, first convenient. of all, I didn't say fake drama. I said that's why it seems like fake drama. But if King would have stonewall, I was more well, I was more than willing to go out on my shield, like and walk yeah. away. So what you're saying is like in poker, I forget what they call it. You were a bluff. Is it a bluffing? Bluff? But you yeah. didn't. It was like a half bluff. You were you're bluffing, but you really didn't care if you got called or not because you thought you had enough of a hand that it could hold or right. something like that. Correct. Like because none of, none of my requests are unreasonable. Do you feel like anything I asked was unreasonable? No, no, I don't. I'm gonna be honest. Not. Okay. Yeah, it's not like it's I not like it's I was over here like it's not like I'm over here asking for a hundred thousand dollars or like trying to extort somebody. I just want the pro- I just want the product no, to be that. better. If you ask him for 10, bo- 10, 10 grand or something like that to go on and he gave it to you, I would have quit immediately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> no, no. I, I don't do I don't do that. Like like I look at everybody as an individual. Like I'm I've said before, I treat the janitor the same well as I treat a CEO. And like You don't treat me very well. I mean, and I, I, th- well, this, you are this, the janitor this, of this, this podcast. Is a, this is a me. little bit different because like I feel like I'm the only one of the three that can treat Keemstar that way and get away with it. I you know, I'll be honest with you. I've unloaded on Keemstar to more times than I can count. Time. I have I've never publicly humiliated him, but I have yelled at that man uh, at the top of my lungs. He's seen old school twenty year old boogie come out on his a couple times. So. Yeah, but but like like I think he stars like me. Like yelling at me doesn't do. Shit. Like you can yell at me till you're blue in the face, it ain't going to change my prog- my perception of the, of the situation. But he can take it, you know. At least he can take it. Yeah, Keemstar is a good person. Like like I want to say he's a legitimately good person. He 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 likes money. But who doesn't like money gives you I wouldn't go to the level of Keem. Like if I had Keemstar's money, I would be not doing everything he's doing because like he's wasting his youth. Trying that's to why you don't money. have any money. <laughs> yeah, but that's why you don't have any money because yeah. you have that attitude. <laughs> yeah. If I had his money, I would lay on my ass for the rest of my life. That's my problem. Uh, Keemstar just dead. Keeps, yeah. Keemstar just puts projects in the death. fucking. I, I will say one thing about Keemstar, though. And I saw this comment over and over again last night. I saw it in the chat. I saw it on Twitter. Uh, and they're all saying exactly the same thing. Keemstar has become a lol cow in, in regards of trying to farm the lol cows. And I think this is true of all of us. I think anybody that tries to get I'm in here. You mother- no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> look, Tommy, listen, re, you read the comments on this episode and let them tell you whether or not you've become a lol cow by being here. OK, sure. and I'm telling you, last <laughs> night, Keemstar just put on his little stripes, put on put on his little cow ears and got milked. And that's just the reality of it is. And, and it's true of every guest we've had on the show. Every guest we've had on the show so far has come in here and eaten their fair share of grass and become a cow themselves. <laughs> I think so. I think so. You think? Yeah, I think so. I, I think. I, think, I so. think this podcast is weird because at no point did I ever give a f- about magic cards or like southern drug dealers, but somehow we got to deal with both of them on this podcast. <laughs> wait, wait, who was the southern drug dealer? And Flaming Star. Did y'all talk about that last night on the podcast before I got there? Yeah, we did a little bit, but for those of you who didn't see the last episode, uh, that guy who I put in a video not too long ago, the guy who was in the documentary. Um, it's Chief Flaming Star. He's a Native American medicine man, and you know, legally recognized by the state of uh, you know, the government. Anyway, we, him and I got back together for the third time, and like hung out for a little while. And he was wanting to help me out, but he was definitely looking for an in. At the beginning, he was like, "I can double your wealth if you sign everything over in a trust." And I'm like, "Well, obviously, I'm not going to do that." He's like, "Well, let surprised me." Su- I'm surprised you didn't do it. He's <laughs> like, "Well, let me buy your magic cards from you." And I'm like, I-, "I don't know about that, but you can." He's like, "Well, let me take them and get them cataloged and everything else." And I'm like, "All right, I guess you can do that." Let me, let me um, ask you a question, Boogie. Do you have what? a civil suit at this moment in time? Not at the moment. Would you be willing to show the contract you wrote up, like have Connor put it up on screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, uh, I'll, I'll make sure Connor sees it. Because like, uh, I, I, I don't know what that contract states, but you ain't got to read it verbatim. The contract says there's a letter of intent for him to purchase my cards from me. That he's going to take them and get them cataloged. He has until February 16th, and if he doesn't get it done by then, he has to return them to me. If he fails to return them, he has to pay me $100,000. 
That's basically what it says. On the third day that he was here, he grabbed my elderly dog, Sammy, who's arthritic and has arthritis in his back and his legs, um, grabbed him by the nape of his, his neck and like stared in his face like he's a dog trainer, like raised his voice. And he did that because my dog barked at him. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, and so obviously Sammy yelped in incredible pain because he's arthritic, right? Like, uh, probably some surprise too. But I, 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 I became the same way I've, I've treated Keemstar. I don't, I'll, I don't like yelling at women, but I'll yell at a man all day. And that's the only thing I can do. I can't hit you. I can't chase you around the house. But I could, I can raise my voice at you if I have to. So, so that's so what I do. I'm, I, I'm, I'm really confused, Boogie. I apologize. I, I got to get this straight. Yeah. There's some quack Indian dog like. He's involved in getting you wealth. He's involved in being your spiritual guide. He's trying and he's, to do those things, yeah. He's trying he's not, to be a dog he's no, trainer. He's nothing to me now. He's just a stranger, but um, yeah, yeah that, that's what he was trying to do. I think he was just trying to like help in any way he could that got him an advantage. Um, what a weirdo. Yeah, right. I don't think you could get sucked up into some yeah, I, I'm I mean, an I, 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 I've never I, I get some I'm guy coming to me like that. I get the I've never went to the what trap house. house. <laughs> he says to me, he says... Uh, when I well during the altercation about my dog, I'm like, get the hell out of your pee. I, you know, raise my voice at him, and he's like, you forfeited your magic cards. Those belong to me now, and I'm like, the hell I have. So I called uh, our mutual friend who's going to catalog everything. Glenn Whitman owns the local gaming stores that he keeps. Them. Um, and Glenn went and got my cards for me and brought them back. Oh, did he? Yeah, and I, like thank God for Glenn because I, I I wouldn't have been able to do anything. But Ryan handed them over. I, Wait, you so know. you got in a fight with him for grabbing it. By the way, I was nobody put his hands on my. I mean, not a fight, an argument. Off. Yeah, don't touch but my no, fucking okay, dog. So you guys got you got you got angry because yeah. the dog yelped. That wouldn't yeah. make anybody cry. I get that. And he immediately turns to you and says, "You forfeited your magic cards yeah, yeah, to yeah. me because he you said, like, yelled at me because I abused your dog." He said <laughs> that we signed a contract, so they are legally his for the next six months. And at the end of that six months, they would be gone. He said. That's and not so how. I that's not how Glenn, contracts work. And so I called Glenn and I told Glenn, uh, you know, like, I don't want him doing anything criminal. Like, this is not great for him. It's not great for me. So Glenn talked to him and convinced him to hand my cards over. Now my cards are back in my possession. So he decided to file a police report for some reason. And, really? And he also went to, like, uh, uh, Facebook or Reddit or somewhere and started talking about how I was trying to steal $100,000 from him somehow. But that doesn't really? add up because you were going to buy my cards from me. You never yeah, gave yeah, yeah. me well, that any doesn't money. doesn't add up. Did the cops talk to you? Forget all that. Oh, boy. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we talked to the cops, and uh, the cops just wanted to know. And, again, I don't really trust cops. I'm, I'm co uncomfortable around them, but it was a short phone call. He called, and he's like, I've talked to Glenn Whitman. Um, it's my understanding that your cards are back in your possession where they belong. And I'm like, yes, sir. And he goes, do you have anything no, else you would like to add to this? And I said, well, not really. Uh, I, I would like to let you know that I don't really want to contact this person anymore. And I would very much like, and he goes, well, if you have any problems with harassment, uh, reach out to our agency. We'll be more than glad to take care so of the cops it. sniffed it out. The whole thing about this. Yeah. Guy yeah, yeah. Just imagine. It doesn't add up. And he said, he said, there's obviously nothing actionable there that at the very best, it's a civil matter. Uh, but he doesn't even think there's anything there because again, you, it's just a, it's a, just a deal that went sour. Like I want to buy your cards. Okay. Well now I'm going to keep them. No, no, you can't do that. Either give me the money or give me why my cards. You have, my like, why didn't you both like hire a catalogger or something like that? We were, we were, we were hiring my friend Glenn. That was my, the, why the would you let him take? Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Why did you just I, take him to yourself? That is what it comes down to is I'm stupid. I'm stupid, <laughs> stupid, <laughs> stupid. And you got the handwriting of a five-year-old. Oh, I do. It's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> like, did you see yeah. the yeah. handwriting? It looked like he did yeah. it in crayon. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. I did a classic lol cow thing, and I'm lucky that I didn't lose every card I've ever owned. I, 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 I am stupid. I trusted someone I shouldn't have trusted. I, I got engaged, uh, you know, like engaged with somebody I shouldn't engage with. I did business with somebody I shouldn't have done business with because I'm a stupid, trusting, desperate idiot. That You know, I don't know what else there is uh -huh. to say. Uh, there's you some know? other things you've Thanks told you me, Boogie, say. before uh that you should probably pump the brakes on, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to leave it at that. I, I, bet you won't that. Get I bet you won't get 20 grand for those things i bet it completely blows up in your face. i mean glenn disagrees uh the, the is, car store it, owner who's is, literally is makes glenn, millions of dollars a year selling these cars what is, is he, glenn what giving is he you money saying? though he i mean no but he's 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 still he probably he's still will catalog it for me and what he does, does he say though what 100k does say? is is easy to get probably if he purchased everything yeah okay but, but, but he's unwilling to give you a hundred thousand dollars no he will he will once it's cataloged of course no he will 
He'll turn around and sell it online is, for more. How much is cataloging going to cost you? Uh, $300. So surprisingly, very cheap. Why, I was very why not just do that. that? I am. It's literally happening right now. So it's, why, it's if, you, if, if somebody's right. going, if somebody's willing to give you a hundred thousand dollars for these cards, this whole collection of cards, why even bring yeah. the fake medicine man in? Cause he was the first person to offer. Uh, Glenn has, has now wants to catalog it, see what it's worth and give me 70%. Do you, do you, do you which, think, do you think chief, uh, flaming or Brexton or whatever his name is, has a hundred K to his name? <laughs> He says, uh, and again, I, I, I obviously take everything the man says with a grain of salt, but he says he's got the miracle cure medication that will cure AIDS and cancer and everything else, and he's going why to sell it to that, Walmart like, why would you do, for like, several billion dollars that, a year. <laughs> as soon as you hear that, like, why aren't you out the door? I can cure AIDS. Yeah. Uh, what, well, then why, why are you driving a Volkswagen? That's, that that I mean, stuff like, started coming on day two. And oh. on day two, I was pretty hesitant. Day three, he was here for all about day 20, 20 minutes. Before he grabbed my dog. In, in, in yeah. podcast one with Wings, you were talking about how great this man is. And I'm telling you, he's a fucking kook that sells drugs. I mean, mm. at the at the end of the day, you know what I really think? And I've dealt with a lot of mentally ill people, my parents, myself. I've done a lot of group therapy, uh, uh, you know, stuff like that. I just so you're think a doctor. A, I think he's just a very confused person who means well to some degree, but also is really out to watch out for his own and try to get any angle he can and like i guess that's everybody right you know no. wing said something really smart on the podcast the other night um or he, last night he said you know trust is to be earned not given and that's 100 percent true and i my whole life i've given trust you know away and it's bit me in the bit me in the ass that lucy fox girl so i dated a youtuber and for his sake i'm just gonna call him Okay, so asshole. <laughs> I met asshole. He was on a website. I'm not gonna say what kind of website, but you can probably figure it out. Okay, so I messaged the guy. I was like, oh, I thought you were married. He said, well, we're, I'm going through a divorce and she just left me come over. So since I have been a fan of said asshole <laughs> for many years, I decided, okay, well, he can't be a bad guy, so I'll just go over and see how it is. Asshole was nice at first, as most schools are. And I thought, well, you know, let's see how it goes. You know, he seems like a nice guy. He was going through some stuff, so I thought I would be there for him and help him through some stuff. One thing led to another, and we started forming a relationship. But we kept it very quiet since he was going through a divorce, and I did not want to get involved with that because that's not my place. And I was pretty much taking care of him every day. I, um, if you know what I do for a job, then you know I have to be at home in order to be on cam. Well, I couldn't do that because it would turn into an argument every time I tried to leave. Why are you trying to leave me? You know I need somebody right now. Blah, 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 blah. But things started progressing and got worse. Like at first, school was really nice, you know. Um, he'd take me out, you know, there was no issue. He would maybe get me a present once in a while, mostly hand-me-downs, you know, so he wouldn't have to pay for anything. I just want to set the look record straight. Things were good at the beginning. It got to the point where every night I'd go home in tears because people thought it was a good idea to scream at me, you know, about everything. Oh, you're not, you know, you're not here enough. You, you're just annoying and, and you just don't want to listen to me, blah, 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 blah. You don't mean shit to me. You don't mean shit. You're just a piece of shit. Okay, well, thanks. Appreciate it. I got tired of being treated like I was dirt on the side of the road. And I was tired of being treated like I was less than. What I went through is something nobody should have to endure. And the fact that I know that he's, he's doing this to other people, to other girls that are younger than me, makes me very upset. It bit me in the ass with uh, uh, friends you don't know about back in, in college. Now it's bit me in the ass with Ryan, and I'm just done trusting, man. This is, that's it. I trust the people that have earned it. I trust my roommates. I trust my girlfriend. I trust myself. That's it. And honestly, with my girlfriend's situation, with my girlfriend's situation right now, I ain't that trusting. 
So, you know, she's what? she's got to earn back the trust. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, well, let's go earn... to that a little bit. Like, uh, well, why I mean, are you like, is, uh, that didn't get settled? or, or There's not much drama? to say other than the fact that the very first time Trap came at her sideways, she should have told me about it. She went until it all blew up publicly. She she wanted to handle it on herself. And I told her, we're a couple. We don't handle things like that ourselves. We handle that together. If we're going to be mm. a couple, we're going to handle things like that together. Okay. And uh, and as it is right now, she's just got to con- continue to earn back that trust. She's probably going to let you down too. I mean, well, I mean, she's twenty years old. The odds are she's going to let you down. I, you know, that's entirely possible. I think she's realized she has it pretty good here, and she's ha- pretty happy with it. She stalked it over with her friends and family and stuff, and then I think she's uh, under the impression. It's the same with like Connor last night. You know, I yeah. I told Keemstar, Connor has it good. I think if we remind him how good he has it. And we put him in the situation. He'll work twice as hard to keep it, right? I'm his boss now. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. But I, but uh, Desi's the same way. But I, I, I think that's true of Connor. You know, I, the, the dumbest thing I think Keemstar said last night, and this really rubbed me the wrong way. He's like, this isn't man stuff. This is boy stuff. Well, we hired a boy. How old right? is Connor? Fair. How old is Connor? Yeah, well, what did you expect? <laughs> he's going to be a boy, right? You know, let's teach him how to be a man in this moment, right? Yes. You, you have well, an opportunity teach, to teach well, him well, to be a man. He's going to teach Connor how to be a man. Well, no, not me. <laughs> King Star, he's the boss. You know, I, should, I can't, I can't teach nobody. I don't know how to be a man myself. I, I'm a fatherless bitch, right? But, uh, <laughs> but at the end of the day, you know, like it's an opportunity for King Star to step up and teach Connor. The right and the wrong, and Keemstar, you don't have Keemstar's to fire going to come to in, give an order, and then hang up the phone. Yeah. <laughs> That's what keeps. That's how I know keep. Hey, I mean, uh, go get those cameras. <laughs> Click. <laughs> how did that work out? Uh, Not that great. Yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, who are you? Okay, buy the cameras for me. Uh, you know, you know I, that's one. That's the one thing that guy that I didn't blame him on because he came to me. He says, um, he goes, uh, look, you know, I just bought you like a couple thousand. I guess whatever. How much? However, however much the cameras bucks. cost. It was 1100 and he's like, uh, you know, I, I keep texting him and he doesn't answer me back. Like, he's like, what do you think? And I just like, do what your rank can handle, bro. I don't know. I wouldn't have volunteered for that. <laughs> and then he finally got him and he starts yelling in the chat. Keemstar's like, I'm Keemstar. I have plenty of money. You should have just sent them. But I got to be honest with you. Uh, in fairness to that guy, where the f he was. <laughs> um, that had our kid. I I I I might have hedged too. Well, Keemstar pay, Keemstar, Keemstar always pay. pays. Yeah, send me the money up front. Pay. Yeah, he's slow to pay. He's slow to pay. It took it. How long did it take Jordy for us to get the money after the fight? Oh, a month. Yeah, I think I think Keemstar is very trustworthy. Uh, he's never screwed me over in a deal. The closest to a deal that he screwed me over is he des- had me desire this. It's this. That card game. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But I, he had me design a card game for him. I got it designed. I got it ready to print. We were getting ready to go to the art stage. Uh, I was working with Vito on that one. And Vito told him what the art budget was going to be. And, and Keemstar backed out. Um, mm. But I had already done my work. I already designed the game. I already put it in the file. Mm. I already handed it off to Vito. You, d- you paid me to design a game. I designed a game. It was fun. Me and my friends who play Magic, played Orkana, played Pokemon. We sat around, we played that game and had a blast doing it. It's fun. I'll put those files up for free one day. Y'all can try it out. But that said, I never got my 5K. I got, I got a question about But then about again, Vito. the product didn't go to print. So why would I get my 5K, right? Doesn't matter. I, I got a question about Vito. Like people have been accusing Vito of the P word. Like, is there any truth yes. behind that? No. No, like, like where does that come from? Like, no, here, here's, here's, here, you don't want to know. I, I'm friends with Vito. Vito is a contrarian. He's a stupid lefty idiot. Hold up, and I'm, he'll, I'm he'll, a dumb southern. What's contrarian mean? Like, uh, like you, you say, like if I What's say up, you say down. Though? <laughs> if I say up, you say down. Okay. If I say down, you say. So up. he's always yeah. the opposite. Okay. Yeah, and, and I think he likes to play devil's advocate. This is somebody right? who actually really likes him. You know, I actually like Vito. Vito is upset. So I mean, he'll say crazy. Shit. Like, um, he was a big supporter of that Mr. Girl guy um, who had some really wild fucking opinions about Cuties, the movie. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. That's a terrible he went on my podcast. He went, on, he went on my podcast and he said they, those girls were attractive. Like, how the hell are you could do a 13-year-old girl? Like, what's the matter with you? Why did you say the girls were attractive? And maybe I well, misunderstood. That, okay. No, no, because they were. But listen, listen. Ah. I, I, but let, let, me, let me explain myself. Let me explain oh. myself. If you think that's creepy, yes, it is. 
What was so, I don't I have no defense for that. How are twelve year old girls you know, you might might do you know, this is my daughter's age. Like how are twelve year old girls attractive hey, in any I way? I can see cute. Uh, I can see like these good girls are cute. So I'd be kidding and I, I have a problem with that. You can like you can't say girls are cute anymore because it's that, Bro, well, I'm I'm I am i am once you bring your daughter up, I can't talk about it anymore. And um Vito, um what what I I forget what they really they hit him on. No, like he he believes that like uh, PDF files, and I think you should say it the same way for Connor's sake. Yeah, <laughs> uh, P- I think he believes they should be like cured or doctors and sh- that's that's kind of what he believes, right? Like, like you can I actually they fix that. Be, yeah, it's called yeah, castration. He believes they can fix him, and he argues with people on Twitter endlessly, even though he's not a f- doctor or, or he doesn't have anything, and he makes himself look like an idiot. Like arguing, and it makes him look like people are like, "Wait, yo, whoa, Vito!" Like, like because you're constantly like in an age of consent debate or some shit like that. That's the problem with Vito. Vito's he's a good guy. Yeah, I trust I, him around my kids. I would. Yeah. I watched a lot of that Chris Hints and stuff, and I like watching those people get caught. And there's this one episode where this guy gets caught, goes into the chat room, says the stuff, plans the meet, goes to the house, gets caught. How do caught. we get from Vito to Chris Hansen? You can continue. I know, I'm not... Because we're talking really about... We're run. talking about like, PDF That's a left files. in a, That's like... We're talking uh, about... Well, hold on. You'll hear. You'll hear. You'll, hear, you'll understand, okay? We're so get back? Okay. There's this one episode where this guy gets caught. He goes to the house and gets caught, gets processed, gets out, and then goes home and gets back into the chat room again... And then agrees to meet another girl like three days later (laughs) at a restaurant, right? And so Mm. the reality of it is, this is a compulsion for these people. And I don't think they can deny that compulsion. So I would vehemently disagree with Vito. That, yeah, I, that they I, can I be fixed I, or cured. I know this is, it is he want, he, He's always trying to be like this 90s liberal, and, and he ends up just sounding like another woke idiot. I know this is left field, but it, back on that Cuties movie, that movie is disturbing as f***. <laughs> but you know what else is fucked up? You ever go to those TLC dance mom shows or like those pageant shows where they got like younger girls than Cuties, where it's like dressing up with like veneers and like spray tans and sh- like that? Like, why are you doing this? For for the PDF files, that's who that's for. That's they, <laughs> they know what they're doing. They have to know. They have to know. Is that a southern thing though? Because remember that what was that the, the TV show they had around ten years ago, and a lot of them were southerners. I noticed from their accents. Is of that course, like a, yeah, the, yeah. Pa- the pageant thing? I don't know. I've um, never been good looking enough to be in a pageant. Yeah, and I've never like wanted to go to one. I don't even really. Yeah, why think, would you? Like, why I would think, anybody want to do that to their, their little girl? I mean, I don't even really I understand know. the concept of like a beauty pageant, or even. I don't. Even, what, like, what's the point of that? See who's the best looking. I guess. You think? Like, like you get a. But reward? isn't that subjective? No, isn't that subjective? So it's ice skating. I can so look at ice skating. And that's I can look at a girl and find her not attractive at all, and you could find her very attractive, right? Dude, it's a it's bunch entirely of subjective. Who gives? Yeah, yeah, I know, but it's a bunch of bullshit rich people or whatever yeah. just trying to like show like people have like we have way too much to It's like the Oscars. Like, look at me, problem. look at me. I have the best daughter. Look yeah. at you ever, my you ever daughter. See the, Oscars, the best Boogie? of the daughters. Like the Oscars, yeah. the, Oscars? the Oscars are just but, a, at all a bunch of rich people giving each other awards for how great they are or how better they are than us. It's the, it's the, it's the Oscar for skinny white bitches. Is that what I'm hearing right now? Yes. That's sad. Should be. That's I sad. Like white uh, at least, at least about, the Oscars are about a, something that it's hard to make. Anybody can make a baby. I, I want, all you got to do is nothing. Yeah, but all that shit is political too. At the end of the day, if they made, if, if some guy been put on some a massive, like amazing uh, performance nowadays, and it, and there was a, like a political theme that pissed off the uh, the people that run the Oscars, he's not getting, he's not winning no matter what. Yeah, you know. I mean, you look I mean, at Leonardo honest, DiCaprio. So, so the same kind of politics go on in churches. Same kind of politics go on in these stupid pageants. They're all just a bunch of it's just a bunch of people giving each other awards. You're right. Yeah. How the hell did we get here, <laughs> you weirdos? I don't know. We're just Lambert. It's fun to ramble, man. Let people enjoy. Let it just let it flow. Maybe I should. They all yell at me when I don't let you guys ramble. Yeah, like, it's not that. Oh, Jordy, Jordy, what do you think about beauty pageants, man? I need to know. I think they not should the be... kids stuff, the adult stuff. Dude, I'm from South Carolina. Miss South Carolina failed horribly in her beauty patch. You ever see a Miss America, Miss South Carolina? Mm. She's like uh... Miss South Carolina is missing a tooth. <laughs> no, <laughs> but she she's missing an education for sure, though. <laughs> I forgot what no. she did, but like she, they asked her a question about like like what's her favorite state or some. She got it wrong. Recent polls have shown a fifth of Americans can't locate the U.S. on a world map. Why do you think this is? 
I personally believe that U.S. Americans are unable to do so because uh, some uh, people out there in our nation don't have maps and uh, I believe that our ed education like such as in South Africa and uh, the Iraq everywhere like such as and I believe that they should uh, our education over here in the U.S. should help the U.S. Or, or should help South Africa and should help the Iraq and the Asian countries so we will be able to build up our future for our children. Thank you very much, South Carolina. <laughs> I don't know why they ask those broads questions. <laughs> they're not there because they're brains. They're like, they, don't, they don't ask football players. I, I can like, tell you why. I, like I, I history was, questions. You I'll know. tell you why. Because right. those girls are dumb as a rock. And it's a turn on for these men to see how stupid they are. You because that's is? what they want. They want stupid Maybe pretty right. girls. Like, what do you think? It's like a subconscious thing? You, I'll do any. Like, I can't even tell you like. I, I don't know. There's 50 states, so that means you have a chance with them in bed. Is that? <laughs> <you know? laughs> I mean, that, I, I think that's a, I think that's a power thing. It's like um, you get that you get to the point where it's like if the girl is dumb enough, she'll fall for your bullshit. Because like a lot of men, yeah, that's what I'm saying. A lot yeah. of men ain't got no game, like zero game. Because I know you do not this, like you. You wins. do this, you do this thing on your thing where you give people dating advice. And you had a guy yeah. come on your show the other day. I forgot his name. And he was saying like, oh, I, br I get these girls at the club and I bring them back and I end up sleeping with them, but I can never get a second date. And I'm over here in chat screaming, Tommy, tell him his game sucks. Ass. Tell him he's no yeah, good in bed. Tell him, no, but they, they, they don't call to tell me to have them tell me they suck. They call in to have to find out what to do. These are kids. These are like really autistic kids that are in the gaming. They're trying to like nine times out of 10. You just got to tell them because I only, I'm not a doctor. I only tell them like. Bring a friend. You want a point, man, and open your mouth and try not to talk about. Yeah, like, but but the reason he ain't getting his calls world. back is because he sucks in bed, and you ain't telling him that boy. He that. didn't know. So you miss you miss you missed the whole call. That wasn't what he no. He wasn't getting them in bed. That was the problem. Oh, because I was under the impression he, he, he wanted the, to, he was getting no, them in bed. No, it's, and a, it's a, a weird, date. weird, really weird, unique situation where the guy he's like twenty four years old. He lives in London, right? But he still lives with his parents, right? So he goes to the club and he must be decent looking because, and this is, like I said, this one was weird. Most guys can't just open their mouths. He hooks up, but when he says, hey, do you want to go out for a date or something? Um, they like, they, they ghost him. So the one girl, the one girl that said, yeah, I want to go out with you. So he took her ice skating, but he had no plans for afterwards. And what we think is she, he was waiting for her to say, she was waiting for him, like, Ari, take me back to your apartment or something like that. He never did. He was like, bye. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So we, we told him, and now she won't call him back. So we told him, you know, have, have plans. You know, have plans where you can take him, where you can have some privacy. You're 24 years old. Well, I, that's what happened. My, my thing is, like, people come to me for dating advice. And, like, I congratulate them because, look here, I'm 37 years old. Listen. And... <laughs> I have played the dating game on the hard mode my entire f***ing life. Be 350 yeah. pounds at 19 years old and see how many b****s you get in your inbox. Zero. So you have to make it happen when you look like when you look like me. When your stay buff marshmallow man sure. is envious, that's what I look like. So what's your what's your move, Wings? Like what's your move when you talk to a woman? That's what I want to know. I, you don't have to have a move. Because I deal with like what you what you got to have. Like I mean, you have to say something. Oh, no, that's oh, a move. You, you say hello. You treat them as a fucking <laughs> yeah. human being, right? Yeah. Like like my yeah. the, 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 hello there, attractive young woman. I believe that you're human. No, 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 <laughs> no. no it's like first off, you, you don't just walk up to somebody and go hello like that. You like that book? That, that's the yeah, that's the so club good. mentality. What you got to do yeah. is if you like somebody, you you find them attractive and you want to get to know them, you do things in a way that that puts you and them in the same room together, right? Like um like what is she into? Does she like um like cr crafting or something like that? Go go get a fucking crafting class. Be like, "Oh, I'm into crafting too." Blah 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 blah. Get, find a reason to be with her and her friends. You know, you always had a girlfriend during the years. Come to think, of I it. did. So maybe yeah. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I've maybe always had a girlfriend. Even, even Boogie, Boogie had a like. Neither of you guys as fat as you are. You always no. seem to have a a better half. As long as I've, I mean, I haven't, I haven't known about Boogie for ten years. Well, look, people can at least. Look, I, I've never, I've never not had somebody on my arm at some point. Yeah. Um. And he, and, I, and again, I think Wings isn't entirely off base. 
And I'll, I'll give you guys, no, if right. those who want to hear it, a crash dating course, ignore it because I'm fat and ugly. If you want, well, it's up to you. Well, but don't ignore it because it he's fat and ugly. That's that's the key. Like, he's fat yeah. and ugly and he's still yeah, pulling. I will. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's a he's numbers fat. game. Um, someone out there is going to like you. Numbers game like you have enough money. <laughs> I mean, that is that <laughs> that is a real nice shortcut no, that I took advantage no, 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 of for about three years. <laughs> for, 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 um, the boogie, I've seen your game. Your game, I've seen you have like two hundred dollars in your hands and be like, "You're the most beautiful woman in the room," and it's amazing <laughs> how works. you found eight women <laughs> in the works. same room that's the most beautiful. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> okay, but like, like my, my no, boy. But here's what he, I got a boy named Kevin, here's what, and Kevin <laughs> was like, found this girl who's into the Bengals. She's excited about the football playoffs and everything. And he first thing he was like, "Man, I'm glad you matched with me. You're so beautiful." I'm like, eh, "No, no, nope. that right nope. there has been told beautiful 25 times in the last 10 hours, bud." There's been about 16 misspellings and four dudes that actually mean it. And you're just another dude of the 25. You got to do something to stand out. You got to have a personality. You got to have like yeah. options. You got to have a like a desire to do something. You got to have something going on in your life. If you're sitting there playing video games and like being depressed about Wings of Redemption on the internet all day, you're going to have trouble with women. Why? Because you're yeah. boring. You're boring. Yeah. You don't have any yeah. kind of personality. You don't have any kind of personal opinions. You don't have any hobbies. And you don't know how to talk to women. Like your idea of talking to women is going over to like Andrew Tate and like listening to one of his like <laughs> legend seminars and like just, just be an alpha male. Alpha males don't mean shit to women. You know what women look for? They look for stability. They look for caringness. And they look for somebody that makes them feel comfortable to be around them. Because every woman you walk up to is going to be guarded. Every single and one money. You forgot money. And, uh, money. The people listen, that the I women that want I, money aren't for you. One hundred percent. Yeah, like, the women that want money are trash. Yeah, find one that doesn't, be honest, doesn't for the have streets. a baby. The only people, only women don't want money are their kid. Yeah, I learned Prior to a, that they want money. Well, they want get, learned, they want money because they can need, need pay for the kid. I learned a lesson, and it cost me about a hundred thousand dollars to learn this lesson. Yeah, so let me give it to you for free. A woman who's in it for money ain't in it, and she also is not a quality woman. So why do you want her? Well, well, which simple as that? Which woman cost you a hundred thousand dollars? Oh, it's this variety of them. A lot of, a, a lot of yeah, it's like over four okay, years. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, see, yeah, that's yeah. a that's a business transaction, boogie. You can't you can't you're not actually trying to. Well, you were trying to sugar. Like you, you did it the right, wrong yeah, way. But, like, that's what, but that's what I'm saying. A woman who's signing up for that is probably not a woman you want to keep today. Yeah, right? well, Boogie's a great a woman, example. Yeah. Boogie's a great example of this because Boogie's dropped thousands of dollars. Like Boogie dropped what was six thousand dollars on this woman, got her a bag, put her kid through a school and shit like that. He could have took that money, yeah. went to Amsterdam, and had a fucking sexcation for like a month for six grand. Yeah. I mean, you know, we've said it. Mike has said it. I've said it. I don't mind saying it. The the numbers in the the document are exaggerated, but the reality of it is, yeah, I think the most I ever spent on somebody was. In one transaction was probably like eight hundred or something like that, and it was like for a, a weekend kind of thing. Oh, so and, you were like hooked on like hour, two hour. You no, like, no, no, no. I was more like, hey, know. let me pay your bills. Let me pay your bills and help you out. Oh, that's crazy. Jesus yeah, God. I don't know, man. See, I was raised in the South, and I liked I that. Liked don't mean taking care. Of I was raised. I, I was raised in the South too, and I, I the first date is <laughs> Dutch. You you, you, uh, you pay for your chicken listen, tenders. <laughs> Uh, but the reality of it is, it was a stupid mistake, and it was you know you it got to pay me. for this shit too, baby. You know what my move is? What's your move, Tommy? Yeah, I want to hear. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I got some coke. You want to go to the bathroom? <laughs> I, I used to hang out with a guy at Domino's. That was his fucking move. That was his. That move. was his move to have an eight ball. <laughs> hey, getting ugly guys laid since Dude, 1973. Dive story, okay, about that McJugger Nuggets party. Um, yeah. The one I got thrown out of everything. They, we all have heard the Keemstar version of it, but let me tell you the reality of that, okay? So mm -hmm. I showed up to this party. I flew from the West Coast to the East Coast to get there. I went upstairs, take a nap, and came back down to the party was going on. And Grim from Grim's Toy Show, and he's confirmed this on his YouTube channel, so you, you think Keemstar is right? Grim will tell you he's lying, but whatever. Um, Grim brought these two from... Uh, not i guess it's not uh, are you are you whoa whoa whoa, whoa. are you saying like is, is this is team Grimm's star toy? was given the wrong version of it on his podcast uh but grim told the truth oh, so grim is out with you. you're not exposing him are you no he already he's told the story oh, okay, the channel, been, okay and i asked if i could bring my girlfriend i said yo she's really fun can she come yeah absolutely awesome well we did bring a little bonus and like i said i'm not innocent in this oh oh oh, oh. let me back that up for a second i am not innocent in this and i never claimed to be as a matter of fact, I took responsibility for all my bullshit, and I apologized to all the proper people. I don't know if anybody else knew this, but it was my girlfriend at the time. I'm just going to call her Black Cat for now. 
It was a Halloween costume party, and she dressed up like a black cat. So at the time, this was the girl I was dating, and we also were dating together. Yeah, that's me. I'm Polly. I will get into that in a whole nother video, but yes, we also had a girlfriend. So me and my girlfriend had a third girlfriend, and we brought her to the party. We figured it was going to be a banger. It was going to be fun. Jesse even mentioned, bring alcohol. Ooh. I yeah, like, so he brought wow. these he brought these two hosts to uh to the mm. this party and they're dressed like right yeah. and it's so funny because like they were cut out and i remember at one Shocking. point uh me and i stepped away from the party because i get overloaded pretty quickly when it's loud and stuff and so i stepped into the the older brother's apartment to talk to the older brother for the little while and those two girls came in and they're like look do you have any coke and he's like no and like, yeah, this is, there's, the party is completely dry. If you have any drugs, I will boo you for them. And they said that shit to the no, stepbrother. Yeah, they're, they're, they're yeah. and I just like, yeah. holy shit, apparently Coke, Coke is way better at wooing one of these types of so girls how, than so how money was a So how was a job? Yeah. How was it? I didn't have any, I didn't have any Coke. On me, Tommy. Oh, okay. but, but I'm not you, a cocaine what, what guy. Do I look like pink. a cocaine guy? Hey, I don't know. The way you work that boogie is like, I don't got coke, but I do got a car and some money. You want to go Let's ahead and go. give me an advance? <laughs> and I'll just drop you off somewhere? Because <laughs> yeah. I ain't got a plug either. I'm not a drug guy. A lot of people think I am. Strongest thing I put in my system is tram at all. And yeah. A lot uh, of people think you were high last night. I, I kept in hearing that. Isn't that so weird? I so you confused. You were me. very joyful last night. You saw, you know, I know I've met you when you're being a miserable fucking prick. Last night you were a lot of fun. Last night was a lot of fun. Well, number one, I had uh, I had spent some quality time with a girlfriend just before right the show, time. which was great. Uh, yeah. And then on top of that, it was just fun to watch Keemstar like get grilled, and that's fun. And watching Jordy pull his antics was fun. I had fun last night. I had uh, a great time last night. Yeah, this is a really I, good time. Yeah, that you know, mm -hmm. you also said to me before we started the show. That people were like uh, mad because I was trying to be an entertainer and stuff like that. I'll what, tell you, no, it wasn't that. It said. wasn't that. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. Yeah. And you said something interesting to me that there is no you. Um, all right, yeah. let, let me set this up for the audience. Um, I think with the whole fake drama thing, it's like you're trying to be everything to everybody sometimes. And I'm not saying I'm not I'm not saying like you're not yourself ever. Or you don't talk about something that means you. But it does seem like you want to kind of pull a bit or do this. And I don't think oh, people want that, that from yeah. this show. Yeah. So. I said, be yourself. And, and you were like, and I, I, by the way, I've said this on my own stream. There is no boogie. There you know? is no. That's and, 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 not. and you're saying, and, and, you, and you, you confirmed my um, suspicion. There's, there's nothing. You're just kind of like, uh, are, you, are, you an empty, are you an empty suit? No, but here's what, what I will saying? tell you. Uh, I had to start masking at a very young age. I had to yeah. mask to protect my parents who were abusing me because that was not going to end well for me. I had to mask to pretend I was happy when I wasn't because otherwise it made the abuse worse. And that was the first 20 years of my life. I had to mask and mask and mask. And then when I went to Upper Bound at the age of 16, I tried to be the fun, fat, funny kid, right? And it worked. You know, I got my first girlfriend. I made my first friends and it was a good time. And then, you know, I got, I, I kept that personality up for college. And even though I was like sad and depressed and miserable all the time, I learned how to fake not being that way. And uh, people responded to it, reacted to it. What age did and you in the realize last you were year, intelligent? I don't think I'm intelligent. I, I, yeah. I, I did. I, I took an IC. I, I took an IQ test at one point. It was 132, which makes me, I guess, slightly That's above like really average. That's really high. Really high. No, it's not. 150 is really high. 132 is like a. 132 no, is average. Is taking your genius. You don't even know. Like, um, let's say you have the 130 IQ. You don't know what the. IQs mean 130 is pretty high. Yeah, 130 well, is nearly genius, genius bud. What I'm saying is, I'm, I'm pretty like good at memorizing scene. magic cards, and I'm pretty good at like writing. I'm a good writer, stuff like that. I have a pretty big vocabulary, but when it comes to like common sense, I have like none of it. I have none of it. I'm an idiot. Okay. But um, isn't, don't you think like you know being kind of a phony and like because uh, that's essentially what you've admitted to. Well, what I'm trying that's gotten you in trouble over the years. Of course it is, and I'm you know, trying very you desperately can't, now. You can't have a conversation, even like me and you alone. You're screaming at me or some. Like I'm trying to talk to you and like like yeah. try to be your friend and I'm trying to come like do you think you may have chased like people out of your life? Of course and, I have. and yeah. everything up and then you, you lied to be defensive. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Mean, it's a very stupid thing to do. Yeah. I, I think I, I, I don't think you're stupid. Yeah, like, I, I think you're emotional. And like you let you do I, things on I think whim. that's fair too. Yeah. Because like there's like I mean, it, you, don't it, sound, it's, you don't sound stupid, Boogie. I mean you do so many stupid things, it's tough to deny it. But when you you, you have a good command of the language. Um, you obviously like 
like there's a lot of things you do that would, on the surface would make you seem rather intelligent. But like then you work with some quack Indian and give them all your magic cards. It's worth yeah, 100 grand I, before. I, I don't get I mean, it. That's, like I said, it comes down to common sense. You know, you know. I, I just I, I didn't have the life experience that you're supposed to have. And and I, I've been hell. I was a shot in for seven years. Why don't you try to be yourself right now? That's what I'm trying to do right now in this moment. Really? I'm okay. trying really cool. hard to be me. And this last year has been about that. Um, okay. I have tried since the documentary dropped to figure out who I am and stop get, shying away from my feelings. Stop shying away from my emotions. Uh, stop trying to put something on top of it. But, you know, like Keemstar said at the last few episodes, you seem really depressed, Boogie. Um, no, I'm not. I'm not depressed at all. I'm a little worried about some stuff, but I'm not depressed. I just don't know who I am. I might just be a real quiet motherfucker. I think I am. I think I'm an mm. introvert. I think I'm just somebody I, who will I, sit there I, and do nothing. What were you like before YouTube? Like, what did you do? Like, you worked exactly in a, you the were, same way. I pretended to be the funny, nice guy. I pretended to be the super funny, super no, nice no, guy. That's no, what no. I always this wanted to be. That's what I now. tried to be. You know what this guy did? This guy was a World World of Warcraft guild leader, and he was having conversations about who gets to be in the guild or not. Let's not lie. To these you're not. <laughs> you're not wrong. I ran. I ran EverQuest raids back in the day, and people loved me because I was doing the shtick. I was doing the bit. So you so you so you did so you did the fat guy bit when people didn't even know you were fat. No, of course they knew I was fat. Would, would you just tell them? I talked them? about it constantly. I talked about it constantly. Yeah, I yeah. believe that. I made it part of my personality. It's no, part no, of my you, you, part of your personality is like you, you like you use it as a, as something to get sympathy from people. Yeah, well, that's part of it. Yeah, but I also yeah. did like the Tyrion Lannister thing. Is at least what in my mind I was trying to do. You know, like never forget who you are. Wear it on your sleeve. Wear it like armor. And that's what I was trying to do. So in these voice chats and stuff, I'm like, yeah, I'm a big fat weirdo. And uh, I'm gonna say I, I'm gonna say outlandish things, outrageous things, because that's the kind of personality I like to have. But the reality of it is, it's not the personality I have. When I'm at home, and uh, and and me and Desi have talked about this quite a bit. When I'm at home, I'm generally a fairly quiet person, and if not being quiet, I'm really absurdist. I have like a really stupid absurdist sense of humor where I make up like stupid rap songs about cheeseburgers and. Let's hear one. The internet, the internet's never seen that. And I don't think they do want you think to. Let me ask you something. You think deep, deep, I've, I've wondered this because I think you have like really deep fucking anger issues. Like, oh, I do. Oh, deep. yeah. You're, but they you don't. Know. They don't manifest like to me. Like I'd get in a fist fight or scream or break something. That's like the normal sort of. A, yeah, you don't do that. I no, think when I was you, when you I was, wait for your moment or something to get back at people. Like you do it in a more. Like feminine way, I guess. Conniving more than any, yeah. Uh, but when I was conniving, in my, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was in my early, uh, my late teens, early twenties, I had extreme anger issues. I did break controllers. I did punch holes did. in walls. Okay. I did. I, one time in high school, I got in trouble, and I decided to split my skull open on the concrete to try to get myself out of trouble. That's you know, I mean, co covert narcissist, right? But I did. I split the skin open on my forehead, um, and of course, I still got in trouble. And then I got in trouble for doing that. And had to see a therapist and stuff, right? Um, <laughs> see, I, I, and, I read you, and I realized in my twenties, you like, I'm gonna get killed doing that. And, I'll, and also, you can look at my brother at any point to, to verify what I'm about to say. My brother never learned to do what I did, which is swallow that anger with a cheeseburger. He is the angriest person you'll ever met, just like me. And I mean, he's got a history to prove it. I mean, that man's been in more fist fights at this point mm. than I think a lot of MMA fighters. Maybe we should uh, interview him. Yeah. I, I, oh, I'd I love to have him see, on the Boogie, show. He'd love I, to I come. see the I sense of the father you. in you. Like I think from your oh. up, from your upbringing, you are a verbally abusive person, but you don't try to be. It just comes naturally because that's Whoa. what you're. That's what you've in been fact, so publicly taught. Doctor Wings. In fact, uh, kind of <laughs> Wings, you are entirely correct. I can be verbally oh. abusive, and I've had to do everything in my power to keep right. from being that person. Right. It's just like because a drug I can cut Maybe you, maybe you should let it out you. once in a while. You think like stuffing it in is gonna like help no, I, you? Like I, I, like our fight was a communication thing. If you, like sometimes you got to be a little bit of a p to get things started. Well, I did throw Ryan the hell out of my house, didn't I? Right. So I mean I'm I'm, I'm trying to learn okay. that power. Yeah. I'm trying right. to learn you that took power. Took his magic card, you dummy. <laughs> you know, yeah. again, get out of my house. Make sure you take I, my he, magic collection with you. He, he probably. Oh, by he, the way, I'm really in debt. A hundred thousand dollars exactly. That's what he, those magic cards. Are. He probably could have uh, taken um, those cards and done whatever he wanted to with them, and I probably would have let it slide. Um, sure. But he hurt my dog, man, uh, and that's oh, that's that's my breaking point. That's my breaking point. I was I was think I had some. Do you ever get these like weird fantasies? Like I was making a sandwich and I was looking at my cat and I thought to myself, 
you know, I'd be really mad if one of the neighborhood kids took my cat by the tail and swung him around. And I had this whole thing, like how I choked the fucking kid, <laughs> you know. And I'm like, what am I doing? I'm not like, this didn't happen, dude. I, this, I, I, this I got one of those. Yeah. I got one of those. I always want to come up to like a convenience store, and they're actively getting robbed by one dude with a gun. And I pull, I get out of the truck, and I build, I pull the big Colt four or five out, and I blow it away through the window. And then, like, I'm getting interviewed by the motherfucking news. They're like, "Were you afraid for your life?" <laughs> And they like hold, put the microphone in my face. I'm like, and then I hold up like a Melly Yellow and like a bag of Reese's or some shit like that. They're like, you see what I order? Does it look like I fear death? <laughs> you know, so shit like that. Do you have, those? Do you, do you have the, uh, that's some macho bullshit. Uh, do you have, I, I didn't have fantasies like that in the army. For f- sake. Uh, <laughs> what, what about you, Boogie? You ever have some crazy fantasy like that? I'd suppress them, but the ob- obviously thoughts like that come to my mind all the time. But I suppress them. And you, know, you don't deal them. with them, now. You don't deal with them like that. No, I, I can't. Like, I, 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 can't. I feel the anger. I get angry, and I'm like, what am I doing? You know? And then, but I'll talk about it, you know? I'll tell you what happens to me every single time is I'll have a violent thought, a violent fantasy, and then I remember what it's like to have violence done to me, and then I'm like, I don't want to do that thing. So <laughs> never have do you ever that. done a violent act to somebody? Yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah. It feels yeah. fucking great. Who are you kidding, man? I, I, I felt great in the ass. moment. Yeah, it felt great in the moment. That's the lizard brain. It, I, I carry yeah. tremendous guilt for it. I love kicking someone, put my foot like, up somebody's. Wings, have you ever been in an no actual way. fist fight? Me? Outside yeah, of beating my ass? Yeah. Can you give us a story? I want to hear one. There was this one time I had this guy named Josh. I called him fat and then he kicked his No, 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 no. It wasn't like this. Like, we were. We were at a friend's house with this guy named Josh, and I brought, I had a game. It was a Super Nintendo game, a Super Street Fighter. It was like a brand new Super Nintendo game. It was like 60 bucks, and my mom had just bought it for me. And we didn't get very many games. So, like, I put it in there, and he really liked playing I liked playing it. And it goes missing right about the time I, I got to go home. So, I'm, I'm looking for it, and we've kind of given up looking for it. And then I see it in the back of his waistband. Like, he's got it on his shirt oh. in, in the back of his waistband. So I grab the tape and I start yelling at him and he likes, he like almost like takes his hand and like pushes me like right in my face. And like, we're right next to like this shed. And I, I don't know. I just, I hit the shit out of the dude. And he like trip and fell back. And then I grabbed the first thing I could grab, which was a can of white spray paint. I spray painted him right in the f-ing face. For reals? For reals. It, you lying? No, you exaggerate? I'm not exaggerating. I would love, I, you know what I was, I was, I wish somebody would animate that. And Wings just going up and spraying the kid. <laughs> <laughs> like, like this is an old story, but like, yeah, that was the last. I want my street fighter. <laughs> yeah, I was mad because I didn't get very many nice things when I was growing up. We didn't have a whole lot of money. You weren't rich like me. Okay. Well, you 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 had, you, had the, you had the big scratch. I no, my parents had it like shit together and. Like, I, I, remember, and I remember telling the story on stream the other they day. Got the board. Here, here's how. Yeah, here's how it happened to me. And talking about getting your kicked. My parents were one of those '80s yuppies, mm-hmm. and I was in a nice neighborhood, nice school. And then they got divorced around '89, and then I went from there to a working class neighborhood, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all of a sudden, people were kicking my ass, they're like saying. Shit and, Pissing them off, and that never happened before. And uh, it actually, yeah, I guess, it toughened me up a little bit. I remember, like, uh, with my old friends, I could say, that's when I was like 13, 14, I could say, I'll get the fuck out of fuck off, right? And I could say it like that. They'd say, like, fuck you back, or you could say, like, oh man, your mom, or something like that. These kids, these are different Jersey kids. They would whip you. you, you what are you talking about my mother for? And then they whip you. Ass. And I, I had to, like, kind of. <laughs> so, got that the, like, Tupac like, upbringing. Like, I, 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 had to go, I had to go live with my dad. Tommy got beat up so fucking often he had to go live with his dad. Yeah, I got me, I got the <laughs> kicked out of me like when I was like 13 cuz I'm talking to guys. I wouldn't say they were street, right? Like not like hardcore like ghetto kids, but you know, let's say their dads were plumbers and they're, you know, that's that's how was so yeah, I, I ended up uh from like uh like 12, 13 to 18, it was a little more working class environment. <laughs> That, that kind of reminds me of Tupac. Tupac did a song called Hit Him Up. And I remember yeah, watching an interview with Snoop Dogg. And Snoop Dogg was in the studio when Tupac released, well, first played Hit Him Up when he finished it. Ah, uh, yo. Yeah, he yeah, had take money. <laughs> but like, um, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Snoop Dogg sat down and said he could sold Tupac. He'd be like, yo, dog, just because we make raps don't make us real gangsters. These other gangsters out there. <laughs> and like Tupac learned the hard way, these other gangsters out there. Yeah, yeah so it, it, like it was a difference between growing up like in Flemington, New Jersey, where there's a lot of yuppies. It was like a big '80s, and then moving to like Central Middlesex, New Jersey. I'll tell you what did wonders for my personality crew, you know? was Effexor. Like when I got on uh, SSRI, 
Like it calmed me mm. way to f- down. Like I used to get so viciously mad at video games. I never got mad at people, but I got frustrated really, really easily. Like if something wasn't going my way. Yelling, you bullshit. You yelling at the, your, your two teammates all the time. That, you that's not, yeah, yeah. that's nowhere close to what I used to do. <laughs> I used to kick the door hey, off the hinges. You're such a bad teammate. You, you were the most entertaining when else. you did that. You were yeah. like the yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I show speed of anger, man. I was a good yeah. time. I yeah. love watching some of those old clips of you. Oh, dude, I used to make people delete themselves off my friends list. Like, go go delete yourself. Go do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's an asshole. Just a young, I, I, frustrated listen, you person. Took, I don't even know if this will make the cut, but you took effects. Or did you get the vertigo side effects from that? No, I got the sexual I side took, effects. Oh, I always get the sexual side effects. But the effects are, when I took that, I got the vertigo stuff. And I remember laying in bed one day and the room was absolutely spinning. And then I vomited on myself. And I'm like, I have to get off this. This is terrible. Yeah. Like when I got, when I first got on it, I just went to sleep the whole time. And then like effects are. Are you guys all on psychiatric medication? I'm the only one. That yeah. Is. You probably need to be on it too. Oh, but, I'm not on it anymore. Yeah. But effects I've been on I went, I went through this thing called my hoe phase, and effects was you know not wonderful every not that. everybody not everybody is like I'm like all the the bad shit that has happened to me. I'm mentally healthy. I don't. I'm very happy, and I'm doing okay. You, you, like, I mean, you're, I, you're, I totally Tommy, here's something better, that you but, we have an advantage on you. Like when you're on effects, you pretty what? much can't get off. So you gotta warn yeah, the girl. I don't want. You gotta, I don't want to get you, addicted. You gotta warn the girl nicotine, ahead of time. Like, yo, we can do this, but like, I'm not gonna come. It's yeah. like it's just not. Gonna I mean, happen. eventually I did. I will say, though, I always got my money's worth because I was you on SSRIs. Yeah, I always Wait, got my this, money's you worth. You guys are on drugs where you can't finish. Yeah, you can't. You, you, yeah, what it does is it makes the highs lower and the lows higher. Yeah, and I'd rather be depressed. The, that but you sh- never yeah. like you. Can, it, it takes a it takes a concentrated effort, and it's like it's easier to get off. Like well, that sounds good. It takes easier to get off on like <laughs> you doing yourself, like like giving yourself off. Mm. Because it's harder for them. Well, some girls might like that. Some do. Like, like, like I if girls that I, really I like couple, to screw, yeah. 45 minutes to an hour is on average what it took for me. So I always got my money. I, I usually gave up. for 45 I, I usually gave up. You couldn't home for her. I usually gave up. Yeah, I bet you did. You've 10 minutes. You guys said it was 45. It was no, I'm telling you, it was no, 45. No, no, and you, it was a you, terrible, you move your frustrating 45. 45. Like, if she's into you. Like, like if she's in into the comment section. If she's into you and you got to tower down a couple times. Like it, easily forty five to an hour. You never had to towel your girl down, Tommy. Like, like, like the like higher. No, towel. I never did. Towel. I had to hit over the head once, so she give me some. Sh- I never done tired. <laughs> no, no towel. T- what are you, Ethan Ralph? Oh, yeah, Ralph. Hey, what happened with him? What's going on with him? His girlfriend, like, you know. So he's yeah. He apparently his girlfriend came out and then went to his other exes and said that he threatened to kill her. Now, again, I'm all about fair reporting, so I've also seen. A conversation that he had with her that may or may not be real, like the same one, the original may not may not be real. I don't know, but I'm just reporting on what I've seen. Uh, she went to the other exes and said he threatened to kill me, and that does kind of add up with the mo, right? Like I had one girl falsely accuse me one. No, time. no, stay with him, stay with him. You do this all the time, Boogie. I'm yeah, sorry. of course I, I do. But yeah, but okay. Right, so okay. long story short, it looks like three, four different women now have accused him of this exact type of thing. Where and of course he was on our show and he said, Fuck a bitch, I don't respect the. It all paints up a, a, a pretty obvious picture that I don't think he's very good with women. You don't think so? I don't think so. See, I, maybe you know, he called it my love phone. Show I think I think the term alpha <laughs> male has like really skewed a lot of men's images these days. Because like to me, an alpha male is somebody that can take care of the pack. Like he takes care of his family. Yeah. He treat he, he protects them. He earns for them. That's what an alpha male to me is. Like alpha male to like some of these guys is just like I f- tons of and shit like that. If that's the case, Boogie's an alpha male. He fucks tons of hoes. <laughs> that's true. I, I think an alpha male is somebody... I think every woman in the end probably wants a guy who is an asshole to everyone but them. They want a man who they know will take care of them and maybe a little bit of an asshole because that's, that's true, fun, right? That's not true. But I think, I think they want a guy who's willing to protect them from the rest of the world. You don't think that's right? My wife loves me because I'm kind to everybody. Well, I mean, I mean, there's all types, but I'm just saying it in general. I think especially uh, a lot of women want a man who can protect them, take care of them, provide for them. And uh, protecting you know, somebody being I'm a girlfriend, or, I can't, or not I can't ex- do none of those things. Protecting and being an 
So we're not the same thing though. Does a real, does a woman really want somebody that will complain about their burger at, to the Burger King? What are we employee? talking about Ralph? <laughs> what happened? Well, I, we, I mean, we're talking about every man on the planet, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, no, no woman wants to be hit by their man. No woman wants to be verbally assaulted by their man. No woman wants to have threats of, of, of death to, by their man. And well, it makes me wonder. You check a bitch, you know, like Sean Connery. Said, but yeah, you but know? you could check a bitch. I, I, I have recently checked somebody by saying. Oh, really? Yeah, Who's I had that? this conversation of there's a very real opportunity that you and I will not work out if this type of thing happens again. You want to be very careful. I enjoy your company. I know you enjoy my company. Okay. I know you enjoy living here. I know you enjoy my friends and my family. And I enjoy your friends and your family too. Don't f*** it up. Is it true that she has to, she's constantly smoking pot? Somebody called me or said something in my chat earlier that she's constantly high. Is that true? Uh, no, she does have her medical card and she tends to get high at the end of a day to like relax so she can sleep good. But no, she's but, not so constantly So she just like smokes high. a bone and goes to bed, but she's not like walking around stoned all day. No, of course not. How, how would you function like that? How would you get anything done? I, I, I don't know. I'm not dating Boogie. I, I know a dude that what lives like that and he's a music producer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I know people who. I mean, well, Seth um, Rogen uh, did an interview not too long ago, and I saw it on my feed before I met Desi, and he talked about the fo fact that he wakes up, smokes, smokes all day, and goes to bed smoking. And in a different interview, I read that you'd said you would find life really hard without my. Yeah, for sure. I smoke all day, so I would. Yeah, I would imagine it would be worse if I didn't. <laughs> all day, every day. Yeah. Today. Oh yeah. After every this? day. Yes, I smoke weed all day, every single day. Since I was 20 years old, maybe something like that. 20. Yeah. And he, yeah, he's and weird. He he's he's not the same guy he was 20 years ago. No, but look, he's like I, a weirdo now. I don't know. But look at everything is accomplished. All my favorite shit right now is he's touched, whether it's the Super Mario movie or Invincible or the boys or I mean, just mm -hmm. all the shit I enjoy. Well, he's you, connected you to like some a way. 10 year old. Like everything you just named was, was like a in, cartoon. Yes, I keep Super telling Mario, you all that. Who I keep telling you all. Super Mario Brothers. Uh, he's Donkey Kong. Kong. He's Donkey Kong. He oh, that Donkey was him. Kong. Yeah, I'm surprised he got that done. And he helped get that movie done too. It's my understanding. He Did was, you see was... that crazy Christmas special he made where he just bragged on Christians the whole time? No. Yeah. I did, did, and he's like, I think he's a Jewish guy. Like hates Christians. Like it's wild. He's nuts. The last thing I watched was, was Seth like Rogen. Little... Was that that porno movie? Oh uh, wow. Well, so, yeah, yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. I don't. I, I usually avoid watching his shit. I don't. know. I think he used to be funny. Did you hear the interaction that he had with Count Dankula? He was a complete. To him? No, oh, I saw. I remember some about he was Tell a total. I mean, did you watch to read some of that? No, I, I, mean, I just said, like I met Dan. I've actually sat down with him. He's he's one of the nicest guys you would ever meet. Like, you know, he's like not a dick at all. And he's like, you should have saw the way. Like, he was like, listen, if you want to learn something about the business, ask me. That was Seth Rogen. Yeah, I'm like what an asshole. Hit him with yeah. the Christian and they made bales, that, huh? the Christmas thing. That, yeah. He, oh God, the guy's a screaming. Asshole. Yeah, I don't particularly um, like Seth Rogen. If I'm being genuine. Yeah. But I do like the things oh. he's helped produce. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I mean, he's made some good yeah. stuff. I probably would not like Steven Spielberg. We probably wouldn't have very much in common either. Yeah, but I love his. Why would you like Steven Spielberg? You don't like him because he's Jewish, or something? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm about to say I'm about to say somebody, but he's Jewish too. I, like I don't like Adam Sandler movies. I don't know why people do. Me I either, like actually. I, I like Waterboy. You know I would because he's Jewish. <laughs> no, it ain't, it ain't got nothing to do with that. It's got, it's got <laughs> no, plenty to do with it ba being bad. So I don't know if you know this, um, but there is a Red Letter Media on YouTube. Great channel. I watch everything they upload. They did this video where they talked about the 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 con that Adam Sandler is running. Right. So he was funny on on Saturday Night Live. Most people agree with that. And his early yeah. movies were pretty funny uh, to some degree. But for whatever reason, no matter how bad he got at movie making. Uh, people kept showing up to watch him. So he basically does his thing. Because it was all guys thing. my age. No, because I remember it was my generation. Like, it was all guys my gaze, all these dude bros, you know, that wear the baseball hats and the fucking Adidas yeah, and they're in yeah. the corn and stuff like that. And then we're going to go see the Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> you know, so, that, that was, it was like a thing for a while. I'm happy going. You know, I never believed Adam that. Sandler was getting head. a bitch. I never believed that for one second. Like every every movie he does, he really? gets this girl that's like three stages above him. Yeah, but, but that's half the thing. Every they, dude, he's, he's the story is the same every movie. He's like a complete retard that gets the girl. I, it's I mean, every it's every movie he ever made. I'm retarded, and I'm like I everything just kind of works out for me at the end. Have you ever seen <laughs> you know? Punch Drunk Love though? 
It's the same no, premise, it's but it's good, really though. good. I heard yeah. it's actually good. That and uh, uh, the one with the teeth. I forget the jeweler one. That's pretty good. He's made like five good movies and like 20,000 He's always ones. He's always plays like a degenerate, though. It's like we're oh, Of course, yeah, yeah. You know, you know how, he is. You know I'd like to see. He is. It's save the, what do they call that trope? The Save the orphanage trope. That's what it, all his movies are, save uh, the orphanage trope. So, but what they, yeah. so what he does now is he can go to a movie studio and he can say, look, I want to film a movie. It's going to cost me $20 million to make it. Sure. You're guaranteed to make double your money back. I've never failed you. Then he takes that money and he flies all of his friends to Hawaii and they stay there for three months and make a shitty film. And then he hands mm. them their money back every single time. And mm. I, I don't blame him one bit, honestly. I don't like the movies. I don't watch them. And I don't particularly like Adam Sandler. But I really? do respect See, I, I the man. I don't like his content, but I like him. He seems like all right guy. Yeah, I don't know him well enough to like him. I've just seen his content. Yeah. Most of his content's bad. He likes but sports. I, yeah. That's why I like him. Oh, yeah, I definitely do not like enough. that part. Uh, but, yeah, he loves sports. <laughs> but I, if he's taking advantage of the Hollywood system, more power to you. to Rip those guys in a hole. I got, they deserve it. I, I've always wanted to see Jim Carrey in like a remake of Death Wish. <laughs> I, is, is, no, I like we're talking about that. comedy guys that shouldn't be in comedy like i think jim carrey is a better classical actor than he is a comedian Obviously. at this point in his life he thought so he tried it he only made one good like serious movie like endless sunshine on a spot sunshine's tomorrow. really right good, but I, yeah. but you really couldn't see jim movie. carrey in like like a death wish i i think it, i would be laughing too hard i'm just like it's ridiculous it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's actually funnier that you said it than it ever happened. I mean, Jim Carrey's a complete space cadet now. I don't even know that he could play. Yeah, he's weird too. Than... I can't stand these Hollywood people. You know, Keemstar. That's one thing Keemstar was right about. He said this in 2016. Why would you want to be like in Hollywood when you could be a star on YouTube? Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? To this day, I think that's way cooler than any of those woke assholes. All right, everybody. I think we should bag it. That's one hour in the tank. Thanks for being a part of Love Cow Live from Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight. Tommy wants Andrew to go Duffy. to sleep. Thanks so much. <laughs> no, actually, I'm going to bar because you guys up my schedule, so I'm going to have to go drink to get. The Are you going to go? Oh my lord! Look, this man's got a drink. Tommy's. Yeah. All right, guys. Peace. Drink. All the best. See you Thank soon. Thank you, guys. Bye.